All right, guys, welcome back for episode number 11 of our series where we are creating an entire app using Firebase, Flutter, and Block. And for this episode, we are going to focus on creating the post screen. So basically, where we are creating a post. So let's jump directly into the code. So here I'm in the main.dart. And remember, in the last video, we dealt with the profile picture. And here, basically, today, we're going to create the screen where we click on that button. So let's go ahead and do that. So under the lib folder screens, we have home here, a home folder, and we're gonna create a new file, a post screen, we're gonna name it .dart. And we're gonna make it a stateless widget for now and name it post screen, okay? And we are gonna return for now not a placeholder, but a scaffold, all right? And we're gonna just save that. So now we want to navigate onto the home screen page that we actually modified yesterday. And I'm gonna close that up for now. Uh, and we want to navigate under our floating action button, which is a scaffold property. And here under the unpress method, we wanna say navigator.push. And this method takes a context as well as a root, okay? And it's a, a bit a specific root. So if you uh, over push, uh, you'll see that you have some kind of example of the material root that you need to be returning. So we can just copy that, sorry, and replace root with this material root, okay? And this will allow us to navigate not to my page, but to post screen, exactly. Let's go ahead and save that. And now, if we click on our floating action button, we are redirected to our post screen uh, button here, but post screen uh, widget. And just to make it a bit more clear for you, yeah, see, I just added a nav bar and you'd see that you have a back button right there and you can navigate back to uh, the home screen. So now what do we want uh, as a UI for display? So first we want to say that perhaps the elevation of our app bar is gonna be zero. Uh, and we want to set the background color for our scaffold to be theme.offcontext.colorscheme.background, okay? And that's just a reference to the colors that we've created under the appview.dart. If you navigate to the beginning here, the theme, we have the different colors that we have. We perhaps have some different colors that define. Uh, we might want to as well copy uh, that and say that the foreground colors of our um, of our app of our app bar is gonna be the background which is gonna be white so that's pretty cool but we can just directly here say colors dot white that works as well so we want to have just some sort of a text field here where the user can enter a post and then a, b a button to just send the, the, the post to the database. So for the button, we're just gonna create the floating action button like we've created before. And the floating action button takes an unpress method. So we're gonna implement that. And this is here when we'll press that, that will trigger the block that we'll create in the next episode to actually create the post on Firestore. Okay, so our database, and then uh, pop the screen. So pop the post, screen, sorry, it's a bit difficult to say, and uh, uh, fit the UI of the home screen here with the new post at the very top. So uh, we have our floating action button. Sorry, I took a screenshot of that. Uh, it doesn't matter. We can see here that we have our uh, button right there. So now we want to say that there is going to be a child and it's going to be an icon, Cupertino icon, icons.add. Okay, perfect. We can make that a constant for more pe performance. Okay, good. So now let's go under the app bar and create our uh, text field. Sorry, it's not body, it's not child, it's body. So we want to say that it's gonna be a single child scroll view. And this basically allow us when the keyboard is pop to kind of rearrange the screen so everything is always shown to the user. I find it more easy to do. And here, basically, let's see, we're just gonna take a container for now, okay? And we're gonna say that the child of the container is gonna be a text field. 
All right, text field widget. So if we save that, you see that we have our text field here. So we need to add some sort of padding to all that because clearly it's too close to everything. That's better. And I'd, I'd like to show you some proper properties that you can add onto your text field to kind of make it a little bit like beautiful, a, a bit more pretty. And, and, and this, the, this stuff is inside decoration and you add an input decoration parameter, okay? And perhaps we want to add borders, okay? So let's add enable borders, okay? Outline input borders as a parameter. And here, if I save that, well, you see we have all borders onto our text field, which is cool. And we can now, uh, uh, let's say that the border side here is gonna be border side, and we can directly access the color and make that gray, for instance. Yeah, it's a little bit more pretty right there. And you can as well uh, uh, say that the border radius is gonna be different and you'd be doing that just right here. So let's say for instance, 10 for example, sorry, not all circular. Okay, uh, why there is a problem? I don't know, because this, yes. Okay, let's move this container and add constant parameter, okay. Yeah, you see, we've uh, we've shipped the, the border radius a little bit more right there. So because it's going to be not only one line, okay, and here when you click on it, you see uh, we are changing the, the border. So perhaps we want to as well uh, uh, access the focus parameter uh, border right here and copy what we just did, okay? Let's just copy that and you'd see it's going to be basically the same when it's focused, but you can say here, instead of having color gray, you can have theme dot of context dot color scheme dot perhaps primary. Okay. And what you would want to do is say, well, if you click somewhere outside the scaffold, uh, uh, outside of the text field, you want to unfocus it. So perhaps you can wrap your scaffold with a widget, which would be a gesture detector and access the on tap parameter and say that focus cop dot off context dot unfocus and save that. And basically if I click here and then click somewhere else in the scaffold, I will be unfocusing, which is basically what we want. Okay, so as I said, we want a multi-line uh, um, kind of text field right here. So we want to say that the that the text is gonna be of a specific length, okay? So here we have a max line property, and we can say that the max line, for instance, can be 10, and see that the text field will expand. If you want your text field to expand on its own, you can as well set a min lines and set it to one, for instance, and you see here, sorry, here if I tap some stuff and I go to the end of the, I go to the end of the, of the text field, it will automatically goes uh, to the um, to the new line and if I perhaps select all it select it all uh, cut sorry and uh, write some stuff like this I can extend to 10 line maximum and then you will have to scroll to come back to it okay so that's pretty good so let's go back and go back in again okay so uh, we don't really want to have a mean line because this is the only stuff that we have on our uh, screen right here. And we want to say maybe in the app bar add a title text that say create a post. Create a post. Perfect. And we can say inside the text field parameter right here in text. It's not inside the text field, it's inside the input. Yes, input decoration in text. And we can say, for instance, uh, that's going to be a string. Uh, enter your post here. Enter your post here. Good, perfect. Okay, we're pretty good. That's, uh, that's shaping exactly how we want. Uh, perhaps what do we need now? Uh, I think that's it for this screen. Now we will have to add the logic to it. I'm not gonna check the entire, uh, the entire uh, content of the text field right here because it's just a demo project. But for instance, you can as well say, for instance, the max length cannot be over 500 characters. And you see here, 
uh, at the very bottom you have a, a counter characters that would be uh, that would be implementing all of the time and uh, that's pretty much it for our post screen so in the next episode we are going to create the post model so the post class okay and then creating the post block and then here implementing the post block here saying we want to create a new post when that's done all right guys well that's pretty much it for this video i hope you liked it don't forget to subscribe and uh, i'll see you guys in the in the next video bye bye